Hello. Bioprocess technology is used for the industrial production of a wide variety of compounds ranging from biomass to biopharmaceuticals to biofuels. The production steps in each of these compounds varies depending on the type of product, organism what we are using for the production, the fermentation process, isolation and purification methods using, but there are some similarities. Let me give you some examples to find out these similarities. Firstly, this is a typical flowchart flow of a pharmaceutical production. This pharmaceutical can be a secondary metabolite like antibiotics like uh, penicillin and streptomycin or this flowchart fit into the production of recombinant pro proteins like uh, insulin and growth hormone produced from Escherichia coli. So it's a general representation. What we are seeing here is the fermentation start from a pure culture which is stored and this culture is step by step developed into a seed fermenter. First it was in a small vial, then it is placed in a shake flask, then into a pre-seed fermenter, then to a seed fermenter. Seed fermenter is used to, to produce inoculum for the fermentation. In laboratory scale, we are using inoculum, you know, if you want to uh, produce inoculate into a conical flask, we will take a loop full of organism from a petri plate and put it in the conical flask. But in industrial scale, it's a large scale fermentation. So we are using dedicated fermentase called seed fermentase for the process. So this process includes the inoculum development. Once the inoculum development is done, it goes to the production fermentation. In any bioprocess, the central part is fermentation. In this process, the product formation actually occurs in this fermenter. If we are producing a secondary metabolites like penicillin, the penicillin production actually occurs during this production fermentation. And after the fermentation, it goes for isolation and purification. In this case, we return as like filtration and centrifugation. Then it goes to solvent extraction, then to purification, then concentration, drying and formulation, finally to packaging and quality control. Let me give you another example. It is a flowchart of amino acid production. Here you can find the fermenter. The fermentation occurs here. Before that, here is the inoculum development part. Inoculum was in a test tube, then into a, we put it into a conical flask, then into a small seed fermenter, then into a larger seed fermenter, finally into the fermenter. Then we have another line here. It is for the raw materials. Raw materials are first combined, formulated, then sterilized then pumped into the uh, fermenter. So in the fermenter, we have the inoculum and the uh, sterilized raw materials. Then after the fermentation, it goes to the downstream processing, uh, like production isolation and purification step. After fermentation, it goes to the isolation and purification part. Here we can see a variety of methods are used for the product extraction. Here is the production flowchart of biofuels. In case of biofuels, here is the fermentation process. Then before the fermentation, you can see how the raw material was processed before fermentation. And after fermentation, the product were isolated using distillation, then into multiple steps, then it made into ethanol. It's a bioethanol production actually. Here you can see a side process. Here the carbon dioxide is a byproduct of fermentation. It is used for the production of dry ice. Then here we have some dry product uh, byproducts. These byproducts are converted into useful products like fertilizers and cattle field. So it will improve the economics of the fermentation. Here also you can see some uh, these fermentation and before that we are doing something and after that we are isolating and purifying purifying the product then some waste disposal and waste management techniques are used. Here is the bioprocess. Uh, it is a enzyme bioprocess, no living organism was used. So in this, here is the actual bioprocess occurs. This is a flowchart of the production of high, high fructose corn syrup. So here we have an enzyme called glucose isomerase, which convert glucose into fructose. As you already know, fructose is way much more sweeter than glucose. So, for the production of high fructose corn syrup, the corn syrup was processed in multiple stages. Then it was processed using the enzyme. Then finally we have purifying it. 
for the final use. So I have given four different examples. One for the biopharmaceuticals, uh, second for the amino acids, then one for the biofuels, then for the enzyme production. These are totally different bioprocesses, but you can see the similar pattern. In all of this uh, bioprocess, there is a fermentation or bioprocess stage. And this before this fermentation, we will be preparing the media, we will be producing the inoculum. And after this fermentation process, we will be isolating and purifying the product and there will be some effluent management system and all. So, in this way, the fermentations are typically divided into three different stages. Centrally, we have a fermentation process or production process. And before that, what we are doing before the real fermentation is called the upstream process. And what we are doing after the fermentation is called downstream process. This upstream process include the procurement of the microorganism which is capable of producing this product. And there we can also improve the qualities of the, this microorganism to increase the yield and other characteristics. Then there is an inoculum preparation step. In step by step, we will expand the inoculum for an industrial scale fermentation. In upstream process, we also uh, this formulate the medium and sterilize the medium and after the upstream process once we have the inoculum and the sterilized the media we go for the fermentation what we are doing is in fermentation we are providing the optimum condition for the high yield so the optimum bh will be maintained the best temperature will be maintained to get the maximum production from the process after the fermentation we go to the downstream process downstream process involved in the step by step purification and extraction of products further in the downstream process we will take care of the effluent also so these are the basic steps in bioprocess technology upstream processing fermentation or production process then downstream processing so in upstream process uh, these are the things what we do firstly we have to find the best medium for the bioprocess so there is a phase of media formulation in the media formulation we should find out what is the best medium for the production of a particular product the best carbon source should be given what what's the best nitrogen source phosphorus and all needs of the microorganism should be met in the media formulation stage then the optimum conditions of the growth also optimized in this stage and once the medium is formulated we will prepare the medium then sterilize the medium and it goes into the production fermenter Secondly, we need the organism, microorganism for the production of a compound. So we can find this microorganism from the culture collections or from the nature. Once we isolate the microorganism uh, using different techniques, we can improve the properties of microorganism for the better produ production. So this improved microorganism then they later developed into the production strain. This production strain was developed into a perfect inoculum and it goes into the fermenter so in the fermenter we have the sterile medium and the production strain in sufficient quantity as a inoculum so that's what we do in the upstream process the central part of any bioprocess is fermentation or production process if you are using a microorganism we can definitely call it as a fermentation process if you are using some components of cells like enzymes or something like that it's a production process or bioprocess so as i told before in my lectures uh, the fermentation and the bioprocess both the two terms are used interchangeably the fermentation process can be done in different modes it can be batch culture it can be fed batch culture or continuous culture uh, batch culture is what we are very familiar with in our laboratory we used to do this batch culture we are taking an inoculum well the inoculating into a conical flask and keep it incubated for one day or two day after the incubation we will take up the culture that's what looked like a batch culture in batch culture we are not adding or withdrawing any medium or any compound during the fermentation it is basically a closed system before beginning the fermentation we will uh, have the medium and the microorganism and we will keep it closed during the process of fermentation except for gas exchange Sometimes we will give oxygen and aeration for the microorganism, except that we are not adding or withdrawing anything from the medium. Such type of cultures is called a batch culture. In the batch culture, volume of fermenter remains constant during the time of fermentation. 
and in batch culture bacteria follow the typical growth curve of an organism uh, if at first it has a lag phase then it jump into the log or exponential phase where the microorganism multiply exponentially and it then reach the stationary phase and finally into the death and decline phase second type of culture is fed batch culture fed batch culture is more or less look like a batch culture with one exception there is constant or intermittent feeding of the fermenter during the time of fermentation some component of the medium will be fed into the fermenter but nothing will be withdrawn from the medium so the volume of the fermenter is not constant during the time of fermentation we will add this feed in constant intervals so the volume will increase step by step that type of culture is called a fed batch culture and finally we have the continuous culture continuous culture is basically an open system in this during the time, ferment incubation time there is a constant addition and a withdrawal of medium from the fermenter and the rate of addition and the rate of withdrawal remains constant so that the volume of the fermenter will be will not be changed during the time of fermentation but there is a constant addition of medium and a withdrawal of spent medium uh, in this diagram you can see here, here is the fermenter and this is a feed tank from that this medium was added to the fermenter in a rate of f then the here is a product tank here is the medium was withdrawn from the tank with the same rate so the rate of addition and the rate of withdrawal is same so the volume of the fermenter will never change that type of system is called continuous culture the peculiarity of continuous culture is that in a continuous culture microorganism will be in a constant log phase in a batch culture as i told before it goes to the different stage lag phase log phase stationary and death phase but in a continuous culture the organism will be always in the log phase of growth there will be exponential growth uh, continuously it is better for uh, this continuous culture system is more suited for the production of primary metabolites and the growth this type of growth is called a steady state or balanced growth the microorganism will be in the constant stage and this growth rate is basically controlled by uh, by the dilution rate this dilution rate is f here if the dilution rate is more we are adding more medium into the bio uh, this fermenter the growth rate will always uh, will increase if the flow rate is reduced the growth rate also decreased in this continuous culture we can operate it in two different modes one is chemostat another one is uh, turbidostat in the chemostat the cell density how many cells are present in the medium the cell density is controlled by nutrient limitation so in this when we are feeding there is a limited nutrient nutrient will be here that is what controlling the cell density if you are adding more of this limiting nutrient the cell density will be increase if you are adding less of this limiting nutrient the cell density will fall so the cell density is basically controlled by uh, nutrient limitation this one is a turbidostat in the turbidostat the cell density is controlled by a turbidometer this turbidometer constantly measures its cell density in the medium and based on the cell density it will add or withdraw the medium at the same rate if the cell density fall below uh, this uh, turbidostat sends it and the addition of medium will be stopped then the cells grow and they grow, grow into a better high cell density then the medium will be added from the feed tank so in both these cases the addition and the withdrawal happens at the same rate so the volume the net volume of the fermenter remains constant always so we have three different culture system batch culture fed batch culture and continuous culture when we are going to this practical situation there are with this there is a variety of modes in which fermentation can happen these are the most common modes batch fed batch and continuous culture finally we have downstream processing downstream processing involving the recovery and purification of bioproducts the recovery and purification of the bioproduct is itself a multi multi stage process and in purification of process in most of the cases the first step will be separation of cell and the medium 
because some products are extracellular and some other products are intracellular so separating cell and media will be the uh, first step in most of the downstream processes and then it goes to cell disruption removal of insolubles isolation purification finishing and final product and we will discuss it later anyway the downstream processing involving recovery and purification of bioproducts and treatment and disposal of waste so this is a typical flowchart of industrial fermentation here is the upstream processing then we have fermentation then we have the downstream processing so in the upstream process what we are doing is like we found a microorganism which will produce a useful product then we will improve the characteristics of organism then we have the stock culture the stock culture is developed into the seed culture using a seed fermenter here we have the raw, medium raw materials it was formulated to get the maximum production then medium is sterilized and it goes to the fermenter once we have medium and the organism in the fermenter fermentation begins Fermenta during the fermentation we will optimize the conditions for the growth and the production of our desired products once the fermentation is over we goes to the downstream process where the cell separation occurs then we will go to the product extraction and purification simultaneously we will do the effluent treatment so this is a typical diagram uh, it the real bioprocess stages will depending on the type of product and the process so in industrial fermentation the main steps are these we have three stages the upstream process production process and downstream process in this process the major uh, stages are first one is formulation of the media the media formulation is really important in bio process the media should provide all the nutrients for the microorganism for its growth and metabolite production and as i mentioned before the laboratory medium and the industrial medium are totally different when we are preparing a uh, in, uh, laboratory medium we used to use like uh, purified compounds but in industrial medium the, we used use the crude compounds as a media further the cost of the medium is also very important in bioprocess industry most of the raw materials are waste products of other industries like molasses say waste product of the sugar industry which is used for the production of several secondary metabolites and the cost of the this medium is very important factor which determine the economics of the fermentation whether it is uh, like uh, the yield is good or the it is cost effective things like that so the cost of the medium is a very important factor which determine the viability of a fermentation and it is also plays a key role in yield of the product if you are using a better well formulated media we will get a better yield if the medium is not that good it is not formulated well the yield will be low second stage is sterilization when we are using the ferment, uh, fermentation by a single microorganism this microorganism may be affected by foreign microorganisms if the foreign uh, microorganism invade into air our uh, fermentation media it will make the fermentation unfruitful it may produce a by, uh, unwanted by products or it may degrade our product things like that so during the fermentation aseptic condition must be maintained for that we should sterilize our media air and fermenter so there are different methods what we are using for this fermentation and sterilization requirement for different process varies if you are making a biopharmaceutical which is used as a drug for a patients the we should maintain the strict sterile conditions but if you are making something as a cattle feed or biomass the sterility conditions will be not that stringent next one is production of inoculum as i mentioned before the laboratory inoculum and industrial scale inoculum are totally different one factor i mentioned is like the volume in the laboratory we are using very small volumes but in industry we are using bigger volumes and we have dedicated fermenters to make such big inoculum and the industrial inoculum should be healthy and it is actively growing stage by def uh, by default it should not show any lag phase the growth should be exponential so that the lag in the fermentation will be less and it's also it should be also free from contamination 
and finally we uh, these three steps are in the upstream process then we have the fermentation process during fermentation the controlled environment is given for the growth and metabolite production control the environment in the sense the ph should be maintained so that the maximum production will be okay and maximum growth of organism and a maximum product formation then the optimum temperature should be maintained optimum aeration if it is an aerobic organism air should be provided if it need any special metabolites that should be provided during the fermentation so during the fermentation we maintain a controlled environment to get maximum production once the fermentation is over we jump into the downstream process downstream process first we have product recovery in product recovery we isolate the product and then purification the extent of purification is totally depending upon the end use of the product if you are consider an example if you are making fuel ethanol if you are using fuel ethanol we don't need a super clean or super purified ethanol but if you are making the ethanol for the pharmaceutical purpose the ethanol should be purified strictly purified so in the product recovery we will isolate the product then purification then go for the formulation and the packaging finally we have the disposal of effluent in case of disposal effluent disposal of effluent some of the effluent can be recycled or reused in other cases we can make by products from the effluent like cattle feed and fertilizers if we cannot do like recycling and by product formation we should treat the effluent before it is released into the environment this is all for today so today we have mentioned about the different stages of bio process we have the upstream process bio process or fermentation then downstream process so what we are doing uh, before the bio process is called upstream process and what we are doing after the bio process or fermentation is called the downstream process so in this upstream process we have media preparation sterilization and inoculum preparation during the bio process the product formation will occur and we will maintain a we are uh, controlled environment for the maximum production and after the bio process we have downstream processing during that time we will uh, isolation and purification of the product occur along with the effluent management thank you so much